Have you ever wondered how to make your LEGO creations come to life? What if I told you that this spy crime car can not only zoom around, it can also turn on its headlights and indicators and rear driving lights just like a real car? Hi there, LEGO enthusiasts and future engineers. I'm Anton from Anton's Mindstorms Hacks. And in this video, we're going to dive into the electrifying world of programmable LEGO Spike Prime. We're going to create a car that doesn't only zoom around remote controlled, but this one also lights up. Just like real cars uh, need to signal where they go on the road and turn on their headlights when it's dark, our LEGO creation needs that too. But how do we achieve this? The secret sauce is the LMS ESP32 board here. It doesn't only control the LEDs in all colors and brightnesses, it also connects to almost any Bluetooth gamepad. Lighting up LEGO creations is a long-standing dream of mine. It actually started back when I built uh, this car with the Mindstorms Robot Inventor and um, I had these uh, wheels for headlights. I thought I can do better, but how? Together with a friend, I worked on extra electronics and um, these LED lights here that you can easily connect to your Lego and this board that can drive them and it's got some voltage conversion on there so it can actually use the um, battery inside your Spike Prime and ultimately after uh, lots of trial and error and um, ordering uh, new electronics and um, building a lot of prototypes finally we did it and we were able to create this board and these lights and also drive them with the official spike prime word blocks so let's have a look at that now the first step to lighting up your uh, robot is soldering a led harness it's a long chain of uh, rgb leds that start here at uh, lms esp32 board and then wind all around your model I used these LEDs um, it's uh, it's five strips of uh, six LEDs and you can break them apart uh, as needed and I broke them in the smallest possible pieces of three and then I uh, soldered them together with very very thin wire I like the thin wire because uh, it's uh, not so visible in your model but of course you can use any thickness of uh, wire and then um, the beginning of the chain here so it goes all the way around the back the beginning of the chain here is a plug that i cut off from an old hobby servo but you could use any jumper wires uh, that you want the nice thing about this um, plug from the hobby servo is that it's got uh, color coding um, black for ground red for uh, plus five volts and white for data and it goes on to the ESP32 um, very simply like this so the ground is on the outside and you can just slide it on and the pitch is just right then uh, we're going all the way around so this is the first light here on the back and you can fix the light with a cross axle and slider then we're going around to the front here and guiding the wire through uh, that block and i'm snapping a beam over it like this and now I'm going to put the LED there, secure it with a bush and oops that's the wrong one, this one should go here and secure it with a bush and the last one goes here or actually the before last one goes there. Um, I want to make sure that the very thin wire here 
doesn't make contact with the tires. So I'm going to um, readjust the beam here, tighten it a bit. Okay, there we go. So now all the wires are connected. Oh yeah, I'm going to guide this wire behind the radiator uh, thingy. Okay. So now the lights are uh, connected. The next thing that we have to do is flash the LMS ESP board so that it gets a firmware that can talk to Spike Prime and also can talk to the uh, gamepads. Um, to do this, we're going to connect it with a micro USB wire, like so. And you can see that it is uh, connected well if the red power LED lights. Okay, so it's connected. Now let's go over to the firmware flashing tool. Now to flash the firmware, we simply go to firmware.antonsmindstorms.com and we choose the blue pad for spike tree and then the connect button appears. Um, this only works in Chrome or Microsoft Edge, so it doesn't work in Firefox or Safari. Um, and we are going to connect to USB uh, through this browser app. So I'm pressing connect here and um, when the USB is connected well, the LMS ESP uh, board appears here and I can click connect. Then I'm installing and click install, just uh, waiting for the installation. This goes uh, pretty quick. It's, it says that it will take two minutes, but it's actually much, le much less. Um, it's so much faster than uh, flashing uh, a um, brick with uh, Lego firmware. Well, this isn't actually a Lego brick, but anyway, wrapping up, everything went well. I think final checks and we're complete so we can close this and next we need to go to uh, another software tool called bluepad.antonsmindstorms.com and here uh, once we flash the firmware we can configure it here so um, we can uh, here we can configure whether it emulates a color sensor or a color matrix and we will be using the color matrix for the leds of course but first let's connect uh, again the board appears here it connects and if you want you can open this and see what it says but it basically prints out the current default configuration and but we're not so much interested in that we're going to make our own configuration. So we're putting the uh, LMS ESP32 board into the color matrix mode, uh, setting the LEDs to 12 because we have four strips of three LEDs. So there is 12 LEDs. And then here we are going to map the Lego color matrix LEDs to um, NeoPixel index numbers. Pixel zero is the closest to the board and it's where the servo wire comes in. So that's actually the behind right indicator. Then uh, the LED next to that. Then I'm going to skip two LEDs because we have 12 LEDs, but through the color matrix, we can only control nine. So I'm going to control all outer LEDs. So I'm going to skip two and three, go on with four and five. Um, then this is a random pixel and then uh, go on with pixel um, six, seven, skip eight and nine. And finally uh, go to pixel 10 and 11. So the last one is 11 because we started at zero, zero and then we have 12 total pixels. Now we are going to um, send this to the board and save it to flash. 
The color mapping is, these are just the default Lego colors and they're fine because we will be needing white, red and orange if you want to tweak the colors, of course. Here you can do so. Now, um, the board is configured, um, flashed in the right firmware, it's time to go over to the Spike Prime software. Let's turn on the brick. Okay, now we're going to connect it to the Spike app. It shows up here. Let's connect. It worked. And we can see that it worked because port E, where the LMS ESP32 board is connected, shows up as a light matrix. Now to um, find the light matrix um, blocks, you have to go to the bottom left of the screen and select Spike Essential. And if you then open the light drawer here, um, it's the third one from the top, you will see light um, light matrix blocks. Now we are going to use, uh, let's do a first try here, making everything white and see if that works. Okay, there we go. All the lights are white. Cool. Now let's um, quickly make some indicators. So to make indicators we can um, make a loop. Uh, there we go and put this one into the loop. Uh, wait a bit. So select a weight block. 0 0.3 seconds should be enough. Then um, remember that the first LED was on the outside. Then we had a rear light, another rear light, another indicator, indicator, headlight, headlight, indicator. Okay. And then we are going to duplicate this. And in the second one, turn off all the indicators and only leave the lights on. Uh, let's see if that works. Wow. It worked right away. So we have indicators flashing, um, a, a, the danger uh, sign, so to say, and the headlight still burning and the rear light still burning. So this is um, a cool use of the light matrix block to um, control external LEDs. Um, this is all fun, but uh, we're not driving yet. So the next step is to actually drive this car. Um, to uh, drive the car, uh, we uh, need to use Python. So there is no way with the block language to use the emulated block to read gamepad data and also send colors. So for this, we're using a different program and I'm just opening the program here that I've already developed and that, um, <laughs> that I tested and just works. Uh, so here the Python program, you can see it, it starts with some constants. So the wheelbase is the length of the car or actually the distance between where the wheels touch the ground and the car width is the same distance but along the car axle and we need these numbers in order to calculate the differential but that's in a different different video so if you look in the uh, top right corner here of the video I'll uh, put a link to the other video where I'll explain everything about electronic differential. So for now, um, <laughs> just uh, uh, we're going, uh, we're not going into these calculations. Um, next, there is a gamepad class which um, you can copy paste from my GitHub library, which uh, reads uh, the gamepad all the time, and then um, we're going to just uh, use the color matrix Python. This is standard spike Python to set a pixel. So pixel 00, zero would be the top left uh, LED. Then um, I'm centering the front wheels, uh, waiting until that is done and ensuring that the 
uh, angle of the wheel start counting there. And then we are going to use async. So um, there is a main loop here that steers the car based on the gamepad uh, data. And there is an, a second loop, LED, that actually turns on and off the LEDs based on the um, speed of the motor and the position of the steering wheel. So I'm reading the motor positions here and the motor speed and calculating the flickering of the LEDs from that. Um, the, you can, I put a link to the code so you can look at this in more detail. And then finally, the last command here is to run both the, the main loop, the gamepad control loop and the LED loop. Uh, so this is how the program works and let's uh, run it and see if it still works. Okay, the program has started. And what you see here is that the, the headlights are turned on and the rear lights are turned on. Um, but the car is inert, that is because we haven't connected a gamepad yet. Let's go ahead and connect a gamepad. Um, I can choose any one of these. I'm going to use the PlayStation 1 today. And to uh, connect the PlayStation gamepad, I'm pushing the share button and the PlayStation button at the same time until um, the light here starts flickering. And then once it is connected, it turns blue. Okay, that's it. This seems like the correct configuration for the indicators and the headlights. Uh, let's check the uh, rear driving lights again and the rear driving indicators. So this is all fine. Let's disconnect the USB wire here, dim the lights and look at the final result. Ready to get started? Head over to antonsmindstorms.com to grab the building instructions to build this car and it also includes the full code um, in Pybricks, in Spike and in Python, uh, the full code that you need to run and remote control this car. If you have any questions during the programming and building, um, it'd be awesome if you join our Patreon community where we answer these kind of questions. That's the end of the video. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, remember to subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one. Enjoy your car. Bye bye.